There we go. Okay, I've got mine up. And I got mine up, Pat. And see, a bank is also known as a B A N C. Yes. That's the French, and a right? B A N C is normally associated with a court. Well, you are a court. You are, uh, per the 11th Amendment, which gave us back the private individual, gave us our right of a private court of equity. Because we are a private bank, so we have to have our private court to go along with our bank. And that's what the 11th Amendment, uh, they tried to take it away in the Constitution under Article 3, Section 3, and then basically uh, the 11th Amendment countermanded that and gave it back to the people because they could not deprive the governmental source of that right. by giving it to a charter uh, organization, a sub subordinate. And then all of our documents out here, the certificate of live birth, the social security card, all of these uh, are there, there are counterfeit issued certificates and licenses. And they're up for a bankrupt in the secret. S E C R E T E. Issued by the Secretary of State or by other state organizations under the seal of the states. But they're all counterfeit issued certificates against a dictionary bankruptcy. These are not real certificates. A real certificate would be given to the living person. But they're issued in the name of a fiction. So they're counterfeits. They're not the true thing. And then they held them in secret by placing that uh, our artificial counterfeit leg G, L-I-E-G-E person, and basically that is one that is bound fetally, okay, and we are the legi uh, board, okay, the sovereign over that account. But he took our assets and held them in secret under a bankruptcy, which when you read the definition of secret, and I've got that in that uh, uh, counterfeit plus uh, Rev 4 and Rev 5, I think both. You need to read these words. I've been telling you, okay? You guys ain't that dumb, but you're lazy, okay? You need to get out there and start looking these words up and trying to put some of this into play. Now, I put these two documents up there that they're a work in progress. That doesn't mean sit back and wait for Patrick to finalize the damn things. Sit down and try and finalize it yourself. Get the understanding so that you can move forward. We are the indemnified. Our fictional person is the indemnifier by the undersigning of insured countervailing bonds. Now, we are the countersigner. We can give the authenticity 
to those documents, those counterfeit documents. We can make them real. And all we have to do is turn them over and countersign them by our cashier or clerk. And you can look up the definition of both cashier and clerk. Clerk is a very powerful person in the bank, in the court. They're the ones that basically take the orders and issue them out. They're the ones that issue the orders to the U.S. Marshals to go and confiscate something. They have the power of a warrant issuer. When you do the countersigning of those. And then when you read the definitions about banking that I've got up there, at common law, the right of banking belongs to individuals and is exercisable at pleasure. Now, you've got to be able to read between the lines a little and understand what that means. We have the right as a banker. It belongs to us, the individual. And it is exercisable at our will because our will is our pleasure, our free will not our controlled state will. There's a movie out there that's called, uh, that, uh, well, the devil and Daniel Webster was the first take on this. Back in 1820, the guy wrote the book about what was trying to take place. They made the movie in, eight, in 1941. I know I told people about that before. Quite a few people watched that movie. But there's another movie out there that was made in uh, 2004, okay, and it was uh, uh, named, uh, just a second. Shortcut to Happiness. Yeah, Shortcut to Happiness, 2004. And it really cuts right to the point about free will. It goes right along with the movie, uh, The Adjustment Bureau, talking about free will. You do not have free will right now. Your will is being controlled. As so many of these movies have tried to talk about the free will. And then they also use the term bullshit in quite a few of these movies. Well, see, that is what we're being fed, is bullshit. We're not being fed the steaks and the tenderloins and the prime cuts out of the bowl. We're getting the bullshit. They're confiscating all the good cuts. And then you wonder why things are the way they are. Because people have listened to too much of this garbage out here and tried to play in their damn system of going after them with their codes of law. Those codes of law do not apply to us. Half of the laws that are in the uh, Constitution, in the uh, statutes at large, do not, well, more than half of them, or I'll say about 99% of them, do not apply to us the living individual. Therefore, the corporation. And then you have the 14th corporation set up there, and they operate under a code of law. And so those laws definitely do not apply to us. So stay the hell away from them. You give them credence, and then you're giving them You're staying in their dreamland. You're not waking up.
this uh, basically trade acceptance that I was making up here, our trade agreement between uh, our my bankrupt and me as the banked creditor. See, I was banked upon the land, so I am a creditor of America. This is uh, basically a legal document. And when we sign it as uh, the fictional person, and you just print his name, okay, and then you autograph your name as the banker and seal it, and then you turn it over and you have your cashier by his free will or her free will countersign it. By two, you are known, front and back. Doesn't say by three. Doesn't tell you to go get a damn public notary. I don't think they ever had anything out there in Jesus' time or Moses' time or Abraham's time. They had a lot of deception going on at that point in time, but... I don't think they had uh, public notaries running around. That's something that came out of England. So when you start seeing this stuff, and then start seeing this stuff in the movies, and like the movie The International, okay? I know I talked about that a couple years back. And basically, that international bank, they could not touch them. The government uh, in uh, the United States that was trying to go after them, and also Interpol, they couldn't touch them because they were an international bank until they overstepped their bounds. But at the very end, it was not them. They could not take them down. It had to be somebody from the outside that took them down. Whether he belonged to uh, the Knights Templars, the Jesuits, or... uh, uh, I know he's Italian, so I forget what the hell that other outfit is out of Italy there. That uh, basically is a, an assassination uh, organization. The, well, I thought it was Merovingian, but I think that's French. Well, there no, there's one in uh, Italy there that's uh, uh, working uh, out of uh, uh, the Vatican area there. Uh, I forget what the hell they're called. They've been in several movies. But anyway, uh, there are protectors out here. That when we stand up in the right capacity and we do not cause harm, now... We have to go to the international window and see everything out here. This whole country is a big casino. Okay? It's bigger than all of the casinos out in Vegas. You have a cashier's cage. You deposit your real assets behind the cashier's cage, or behind the counter. What do they give you? They give you counterfeit money, tokens, to go out and play around on the floor. So you go over to the blackjack table. Well, that's really the driver's license table. You go over to the craps table. That's really the mortgage or your house table. All these different things are basically 
crap game or game of chance. And if you don't know how to play the game, you're going to get burned. And that's why everybody has been getting burned, because they don't know how to play the game. It's just one big game to these people. That's all it can be. Nothing more. And nothing less. So now when you start understanding how to play the game, you can fight back. Now, as a private American international banker, you said, and you do when you do your termination, uh, your trade termination, you will then issue a court order to the Secretary of the State to cancel all certificates and all licenses. And also at the same time, as an inter- private international or private American international banker. You will demand your international identification to operate within this state. From the Secretary of the State's office, that you will go through the international banking window at the Secretary of State's office. You don't go to the common player's window. Okay? Hopefully this is making a little sense to you guys. Yes, it is. Try and give you some analogies of what's going on here in the whole process. (laughs) I've given you the definitions right out of the Uh, quite a few of the dictionaries. A banker is one who makes merchandise of money. We are a banker. Bottom line. Then it also says bank, an institution that can, is discounting commercial paper. We can do the 1099 OIDs and discount the commercial paper that they are putting out there on us. Everything that basically is being held right now under our certificate of live birth is all under commercial paper. It's a commercial, that certificate of live birth is a commercial paper. That bill of exchange that I submitted in uh, to them, I needed to send a 1099 OID along with that. I don't have any of them yet, but basically I'll be uh, faxing a copy off or something in the morning to them and addressing that I'm coming into that uh, treasurer of the United States. I want to go to the international window. That's what you need to put on the outside of your envelopes. This is an international transaction, or I want this to be processed through the international window. A private banker, the proprietary proprietor of an unincorporated bank, a person engaged or firm engaged in receiving deposit, discounting commercial paper, selling bills of exchange, or and doing a banking business without special privileges or authority from the state. We don't need any damn state to tell us what the hell to do. We are over the state They are the public servants. We're not their servant. But 
They've got everybody thinking just the opposite. And then we have the power as a court out here. Because basically a court is nothing more than a bank. And the president, our president of our bank, can make the ruling. Issue it to our cashier, our right-hand person. Or our clerk. Who then issues out the order to the U.S. Marshals or to whoever. And we send these out. We will take, and there's a uh, U.S. Marshal form. Uh, or a form that the cat clerks have. Uh, if you go into several of the, the federal district court uh, court sites or the bankruptcy court uh, and go through their forms, you'll find that there's a form that basically the clerks uh, have there that can be filled out and sent to the U.S. Marshals. Well, we can take that form and modify it and make it our private form. That's the one that's called writ of assistance, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Let's see. We turn around, and we are the creator, so we can create our own private form, our private banking, coming from our court, banking court. And see, we have a bankrupt, and we are a bank. And one of the guys... uh, Bill here on the line, okay, basically uh, we tried a bunch of stuff through the bankruptcy court, and lo and behold, the old bankruptcy judge came out there and said, you can do this yourself. When he basically said, I can't help you. But he said, you can do this yourself. Well, there's only one way that we can And that is, as we are a private international bank, B-A-N-K slash B-A-N-C, out here operating under private international law. We have the authority as a bank, as a court a far superior court to the Supreme Court even. Because we're the court of man. They're a court, a Supreme Court of a corporation, of a chartered organization or whatever. So, yes, I spent one hell of a lot of time, but it was a learning process to go to all the damn different courts. Then only, if need be, will we ever approach the one court that does not have a blindfold on. the International Court of Trade in New York City. Because they will see us, and we will come in as the plaintiff into that court. But there again, we come in to the international window. We don't come in in any other capacity into that court, and that's where we messed up when I sent stuff to them before. I never got any recognition. So everything I've done out here basically has been all leading up to this. And none of these other guys out here are anywhere close to this. They're out there talking about bits and pieces. Now we can issue a court order to the trust to the trust building to the vicar general of the Church of Rome for our Sestake trust that they're holding. 
but it's coming as an international bank item. And then we're also operating under uh, in this capacity of posting this through the post post office system. And we are a postmaster general of our post office in white. And all you need is a two or three cent stamp. Like I said the last time, throw your two cents in. Okay, that was the old terminology of two cents out there. Well, it was referring to using a two cent stamp. But they've jacked that up, I think, in the 1920s or 1930s to three cent stamps now. And yes, there have been quite a few people who have got mail sent all the way across the country with no problem uh, using a three cent stamp. But yet, they also have, since we are dealing in the postal system, and if you don't have everything down right, uh, basically you're still going to end up paying the other 43 cents or getting bills for it because you're not identifying yourself as being an inter international. So you can look over these two documents that I posted up there, okay, uh, to try and uh, the uh, trade it. Uh, agreement and then basically the uh, trade termination. And we're going to terminate the thing basically as soon as we get the trade agreement done. We turn around and we terminate that because basically our person is operating in a counterfeit world and we want to come out of that world. Now, if you want to stay in the world, then you don't do the termination, you just stay there and play. Uh, do all the 1099 A, B's, and C's and uh, uh, those documents and do the countersigning of all the electric bills and everything else. And uh, you can exist that way if you want to. So you got the choice. I'm giving you free will, okay? That's more than the state will ever give you. You have the choice to make. So it's up to you. But it's here. And this is the only way that I can see it from what we've been told by almost all the courts out here, that they do not have the jurisdiction to do what we want done. We have to do it as an individual, as an international, American international individual. as a bank, American bank or banker. And then basically you can turn around and you can take a look at some of uh, the court orders that have come out of the court and you can uh, modify those documents to write up court orders to the Secretary of State, to the cashier, or to the uh, treasurer of the United States, or to the Church of Rome, that you make them coming from your court. Make them look like they're somewhat an official court document. You as the living are the plaintiff. The indemnified is the plaintiff. And you're... Uh, bankrupt, and that's what you're, you're coming in, and you've taken him into bankruptcy, now uh, that Church of Rome, that treasurer, that Secretary of State are holding assets 
that belong to the bankrupt. And you're coming in and having the, uh, those be confiscated or returned over to you as you are the creditor in the bankruptcy. And see, that's one of the key things out here in all throughout the history of the statutes at large was all the dealings with bankruptcy. Now, quick question with you mentioning the creditor. Um, do you find it then necessary that we still go through with the UCC-1s? No. Okay. You do not do not? any UCCs. Those are public documents, okay? They were created in the 1950s out of the Church of Rome uh, uh, school uh, known as the University of Chicago. Okay? And they are under a... Uh, uh, Copyright, okay? okay. They're, public, they're public documents. You want to be in the private, you use your own damn documents. So essentially the church created their own documents to submit huh? them into the public. So you're saying essentially the church came up with their own public documents. Well, the church and the state work hand in hand. There is no separation between the two shitheads. I see. Yeah, they've been in bed together ever since 1812 in the Treaty of Paris to try and destroy this country. The money changers and the Church of Rome, or the monarchs out of Europe. the ruling class families. Now, people jump all down the throats of all uh, our dead forefathers out here that set up the Declaration of Independence, that set up the Constitution. Now they sort of overstepped their bounds in uh, doing the Constitution, but they had to modify it uh, because they had to come up with several uh, uh, amendments to the Constitution to straighten a few things out, to clarify a few items. And one of them was the 11th Amendment of the Constitution giving us back our court of man as a private court of equity. They have no jurisdiction over the equity of man. That's why they needed to come up with these secret contracts, certificates, licenses to basically create a bankrupt person using our same name. Therefore, those assets were now deprived from us, the creditor. That's what that definition says. And you have to come in in any court action out here and claim conspiracy to be fraud. You have to allege it. Because that's what all these counterfeit courts are all about. They are operating in a conspiracy to defraud us, the living. We're supposed to be the indemnified. But all we have to do is do a countersigning on the back of the court order or whatever, and give it back to them. Slide it back across the counter. Now it is in their hands. 
It's the old burning match theory. You light a wooden match and you start passing it around. Sooner or later, that match is going to burn down and somebody is going to get burned. As long as that piece of paper is going back and forth and you keep uh, sending it back across the table with your additional conditions, it's out of your hands. As soon as you stop, you just got burned if you're holding a piece of paper. Understand? Especially that last part, I understand uh, about we gotta if we if we stop we get burned. I get that. No, I don't understand. I comprehend what you're saying, though. Now you've got to keep that piece of paper flowing back and forth. The court cannot stop if you're still in motion. They can't hit a moving target. They're dead. They're fixed. They have their set rules and regulations, but you don't. You can step outside the boundary marks, run around behind them, and score. See, you have no boundaries. You are a non-resident international. That's why you put CO in front of your address, care of. That's only where you get your mail delivered. But otherwise, you can move anywhere you want to. That's why God gave us feet, so we can walk from one place to another. Get the hell out of town. We don't have roots. We got feet. They have roots. They can't move. I come up with a whole bunch more analogies. Still haven't figured out why a raven is like a writing desk, though. The analogies do help a lot, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, but it's something that you guys should be starting to think about, okay? All of these analogies have been out here. You just need to open up, wake up, and start looking at things from the right perspective and stop going by what the state has tried to control you with or the churches. Saying you've got to do it this way or you're not going to go to heaven. Okay. Uh, go ahead and open it up for some questions. I'll stay on for a little while, and then I'm going to cut it short because I'm on a limited time card here for my phone. So. Okay. Well, you've been given us a lot to chew on here, so good. Uh, this is a lot think already. I'll be on the call tomorrow night, so you guys can talk this over. Basically, look those documents over, break them down, tear them apart, figure out what the hell I'm really saying. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to be on the call tomorrow night. You can have it, and uh, basically you can leave it open for an open discussion. Call. Sure, we can do that. We can do now that. I sent you an email, Tom, to try and get on your Skype group. I'll come on to that and uh, talk uh, some there uh, when I get on the computer if uh, people are on there. But, uh, Actually, it's not Otherwise, a I'm going to restrict my time on the phone, okay? Okay, it's, it's not actually a talk group. It's a uh, text group. Where we're well, basically texting. whatever you, you want. I mean, there are right. people you can call up. And basically, if they have a question, they call 
on Skype and uh, ask the question in person. Okay. 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 We'll now, Skype, Skype has that capability to talk. Yep. Yes. Except we okay. have so many on on there that uh, it it uh, has bad quality. That's and then when that happens, we switch over to the this this thing, and we can do it for just a short time at any time. We don't have to do it just at this time. We can decide to do it 15 minutes and then. Yeah, but, I mean, basically, uh, you can set up a Skype uh, uh, group, and I've talked to other people on the uh, different Skype groups there before. Okay. Okay. Very good. Set up a special uh, call, and uh, then everybody just sort of uh, comes in. Whoever sets it up, then they could add the other people into the call, the Skype call. Actually, I think I can throw you in our Skype group now because we already have have contact. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll do that just now. Okay. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. I got a quick question about um, part of your implementation utilizing the, um, the bills of exchange. Those are directly um, work with uh, the 1041Vs and the 1040Vs, correct? Well, it all depends on what you're doing, okay? If you're trying to come in as a private international banker, you can make up your own bill of exchange, your own bank bill of exchange. See, we're yes. not doing bonds, but we can do bills of exchange. But we have so whatever we would be recording on that bill of exchange, you would then also record on the 1041 or 1040 V, correct? when we're sending that in to the IRS? Not necessarily, okay? Once we come out and become into the private, we don't need to do that, okay? We're in the international. What are those forms for? Are they for the international or are they for the public? They're for the public. And that basically that foreign grant or trust EIN is an international banker's number. Uh-huh. An American international banker's number. And it came out of Philadelphia, which is the du jour uh, seat of government in America. The corporation was moved down to Washington, D.C. <laughs> Now, why would that location have changed to Cincinnati? Because my when I got my 98 um, the confirmation letter back, it said uh, from Cincinnati. It was a 98. The number came yeah. out of Philadelphia. If you go and track down where that number, uh, the authority of that number came from, if it's a 98 or whatever, uh, it came out of Philadelphia. Okay. Okay. I was just looking at this... You can go in there and look up EINs, and then we'll tell you where the two-digit uh, EIN uh, authority uh, is at. Yeah, the IRS manual does still say 98 is from Philadelphia. Yes. I was, I was just trying to figure out why then the letter came from Cincinnati. Because they moved several of the offices down there but they still have to go up to Philadelphia to get that number. Hell, I got my number, 98 number, out of Ogden, Utah, but they went to Philadelphia to get it. I see. (laughs) I just brought up the 1040 um, and 1041Vs because I was looking at this uh, international bank trade agreement document you have up here, and down at number four, um, it says the private American and national bankers cashier clerk is also um, to issue the following IRS forms, and one of which is the 1040V or the 1041 vouchers along with the private American international bank's money order to make a payment if required. So that's why I was questioning that. Right. If basically, if you know, you've got a tax bill or something like that, and you feel it's a valid bill, you do a countersigning of that bill. Uh, you make the voucher out. Uh, if 
they've got a, if they send you a voucher, then basically you just do a countersigning of that for that amount of money. You make out a bill of exchange uh, in the name of your fictional person, okay? And uh, you send it from your bank. You sign it as the bank president on the one side, and then you do a countersigning on the back side of that. Now that is an international bill of exchange to do the set off. But you better have your international trade agreement in place. That is like in their world, in the public world, the having a UCC3 on file. Okay, so this trade agreement, through... this international trade agreement, private international trade agreement, is the private com- comparable UCC3. Hmm. You want to be in the private? You act like you're in the private. I have a, um, <clears throat> my employer just sent me a W-2 form um, trying to figure out how to correctly go about to I'll listen to the issue. audios over and over again until you get an understand. Go and watch a few movies, and basically you might pick up a few tidbits there. And uh, it's all right here. I've tried to lay this all out for you, okay? Okay. When you understand who you are, and right now you don't understand who you are, or else you, your mind should be starting to roll and starting to click, oh, I can do this, I can do that. I don't need their damn shit. I have authority over them. Right. I have the power. But you stay away from doing any bonds. You already are the indemnified. You use the certificate of live birth or the social security card or the driver's license or the certificate of title. Those are indemnity bonds out here. And when you read that 1865 National Banking Action document there, it talks about these bonds. That basically the government was issuing out, indemnifying, and that they have carried this further with the 14th Amendment uh, created bankrupt person under these secret uh, certificates and you are the indemnified your fictional person is the indemnifier so you've got to read over these two documents that I've tried to lay out and address who is who and then look at the definitions okay any more questions the bill of exchange that you put out last week, it, that's not considered an international bill of exchange? Do we need to? Uh, we need to readdress that. I need to remark that one up and uh, uh, take that off as uh, I have private uh, uh, bank or bank, uh, counter bank, private bank, counter, private counter bank. So we okay. need to change it to a private American international the bank bill of exchange. Okay, I already sent that in. So, is it well? Amendable? Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we can we can amend that. We can correct okay. the mistakes that we made. Okay. Uh, okay. Just think about how you want to correct it. But we okay. might want to turn around and do a 1099 OID in there along with it, mm-hmm. since basically the money is now presently being held under our bankrupt person, so we need to have a uh, uh, discounting, okay. an original discounting of what is held over in the counterfeit world okay. to bring it into the real world. And at that point in time, we could put a copy of our international trade agreement, and then we should send everything in when we send this into the treasurer of the United States and have it marked, uh, this is to be processed through the international banking window. Okay, that sounds good. Oh. 
then when you call up the Treasury and say that you are an international banker, you might get some respect. You might get a phone number. Okay. Same thing with the uh, Attorney General's office and the same thing with the Secretary of State. We need to go into the international window. At a casino, they have uh, the common players' windows. They have the high-dollar windows. And then, lo and behold, they even have international player windows. I know, because I've been in most of the big casinos. (laughs) Yes, we're getting some feedback again. Someone has their speakers on. See, I've lived almost everything that I'm talking about out here. And that's more than I could say for most of these other people that have done any of this stuff. My whole life has been leading up to this one point here. It gave me all the the items that I needed to have the understanding, the common sense. The being the real rebel, not a just a uh, belligerent rebel out here, but a rebel of understanding or overstanding of, of knowledge. And I'm there, I can. Well, this sure um, fills in a lot of the missing pieces. I'd go as far as to say this is a missing piece. But it's it's such an obvious missing piece. That's the problem. I mean, this piece should have been identified from the get-go. Now, these documents here, um, the trade agreements, these, do these correspond with the, um, the social, the revocation, the social security documents as well? Well, basically, this takes precedence over those trade agreements. It's now an agreement between you, your bankrupt, and you as the banker, okay. between you as the indemnified and your bankrupt person as the indemnifier. It's a trade agreement between the two. Now, if he doesn't live up to his trade agreement, and he's not going to, he's already in violation, we know of that, out here, then uh, basically, uh, if you read the document there, I put a clause in there, that basically this at the very end of the trade agreement that uh, the termination of this will be uh, based upon uh, the bank court making the final determination. It went into place, this trade agreement really went into place when you turned 18. I just find it funny that we have all the players we need right here sitting in our lab. Yeah. All my traffic tickets, I've got to turn around and redo them. I've got to put a countersigning on the back of them, turn around and send them back into the court. If you've got a traffic ticket that is still uh, within the last three years, okay, and it had an indemnity bond or a uh, appearance bond on it. You need to do a countersigning on the back of that document for the settlement of that bill. And then, if you paid anything out of your back pocket, you need to claim that back 
plus your appearance bond. You do the countersigning of that, and you send that in to special attention to the judge of that court or to the cashier, to the clerk of the court to have process. And you come in, and basically now, as an international banker, now they have three days to process that banking transaction that you just gave them. It's now in their hands. It's a banking transaction. Now, if they do not operate within the three-day time period, guess who got the burning match? They did. And they just got burned. Patrick and Skeeter, could we do that with our 1041s? Yeah. Yeah, You know, after we fill them out regularly and just put the... um, (laughs) countersigning on the back of it? Yeah, but basically you need to turn around and you need to think about uh, the 1099-Cs and stuff like that that we did. Uh, We probably should have done 1099-OIDs instead of the 1099-Cs in a lot of this case. And then the instruments that we uh, sent in, did we do a countersigning on them when we sent them back to uh, whoever? So it's probably good to do a countersign on any piece of paper that we're sending in. Yes, that has, you um, have to have your clerk or your cashier or slash, cashier slash clerk of your bank do a countersigning. That is your right-hand person. He does the countersigning on the back. So anything is, or anything that needs a signature in the front it should bring a, a red light on that says countersign on the back in my head. Everything. You all you countersign everything, everything from yeah. your clerk because everything basically out here is money. It's mm. all about money. It's a banking transaction. Mm. Okay. <sighs> Okay, any more for Patrick? Uh, Even your Social Security. Think about it. Your Social Security checks that you get. Are they real money or are they play money? They're play money. They're tokens in in the casino game here. What do you need to do with that? You need to turn around and you need to do a 1099 OID against that. Even if they, um, well, they deposit them. They don't even send them to you anymore. Yeah, but you, See, you that's still... their trickery. Oh, but you can do an OID on them anyways. Yeah, well, basically the best thing to do is get the hell out of our damn system, okay? Yeah. But in the meantime, we have to use something before, you know, as we're getting closer to that step. Yeah. Well, basically, you get out there and you start uh, uh, getting this trade acceptance in and then go to the right, uh, to the international window instead of going to the common uh, uh, citizen's window and not getting anything out of them. I would think you could even take the bank statement for the end of the month and do the countersigning on the back of that. Because the statement well, shows whatever. all the deposits. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to get into half that other stuff, okay? Uh, your bank statement, basically, you shouldn't have a commercial bank account. Uh, you should have a private uh, commercial bank account if you want to have one under your 98 series EIN number. And then, basically, they could not be utilizing that. There would be no FDIC insurance or anything else associated with that account. It's just like you're coming in as an international banker from France over to America, and you need to have a bank to uh, basically 
uh, have your assets sent over so you can make uh, payments here in the local area. See, this is what you need to start looking at. You need to start looking at how to be a banker, okay? I'm not telling you everything out here because I don't know everything about it. That there are little tidbits out there that basically are available if you know where to start looking for them, okay? You'll find them. The best place is to keep it in your own damn vault. The coffee can in the backyard, the mattress in your house, whatever. You can leave the big uh, still on in the depository in the treasury. But now you would have total control as a private international, private American international banker. And your assets would not, now not be held within uh, the Department of the Treasury, but the Treasury Department. which would be in an unbondable state. Okay, any other questions? I, I have, have one. Uh, people have been talking about core problems. It, 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 should, should I... Uh, uh, give them the our trump card document for them to use, or should I, we not be just handing that out? Yeah, the trump card or the counter, uh, uh, the overt action. Yeah. Document. Give it Over to them. Okay. People need to that, know that they need to walk into court, and the first thing they need to do is to revoke the underwriting, and the second is to come in and uh, that they are uh, claiming conspiracy to defraud and also counterfeiting. Right. And saying we're going to go where this counts if it, you don't have a reply. And then we will take this to a civil court if that is what okay. is needed. But if I will uh, basically come in peace, I will uh, sign off, do a countersigning on this court instrument, but I'm going to put my countermands or my counterclaims upon the back of it and slide that across the table to them. Now it's in their hands. Now when the judge turns that piece of paper over, he has something to look at. Now the match is in his hands. If he holds it too long, he's going to get burned. See how simple this game is? Mm hmm. I was just wondering if we wanted to make that available to people who who were, were foreign to what we're doing uh, and just sort of get them it's, interested it's, in what we I have no copyright on any of this shit, Tom. Hand okay. it out. If people need help, give it to them. Okay, we'll do that. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any problems out there? Okay, I'm done then. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Talk to you maybe next week. We'll okay. See you later. Uh, you guys okay. take care. See you. Thank you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I got a question to ask because I, I, I didn't want to bother Patrick with this old old stuff. And my question is on that relationship uh, form, the latest form. What 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 do you put in the identifying number portion of it? And yeah, um, 
date of uh, the civil and the date of appointment. What do you, what are you putting those in those in those um in those Which form are you talking about? The the relationship ID form. The oh, relationship. this is the one that replaces the uh, 56. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's the one. Okay. The uh, identifying now them. now you you know you know you know remember when we did the 56 when when did we do the 56? Right after we got our estate EIN, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, because you know, go back and compare this this form to the 56, so that you can see he's basically taking that of 56 and privatizing it. Okay. What's the name of that um that document? Uh, it's in the most recent directory here. Let me look. That was a while ago. I mean, it's been changed. And also, my times. next question is, um, in light of this document, um, should we still submit the Form 56s? No, no. He's, he's basically saying, no, this is a new, you know, this is going back to do everything in private. Stop using their forms. We did a private right. form. We did a private 56. Right. Right, and that's the one that had had relationship in this title. That's the one that I'm inquiring about. Right, right. I don't even so know where. So in in that one, uh, rem remember that the your, your identifying number on the 56 was what? Your estate number. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. I just I didn't know. Right. But 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 what about the the the, the date of civil death? What when is that? That's that's when I turned 25. Uh, well, would either well is it at birth or is is it at age twenty one when you actually gain authority over your estate? I think it's twenty one. Yes. Isn't it or twenty one for a woman and twenty five for a man? Something like that. Yeah, I, I believe it's twenty five yeah. then. So that is when I turn twenty five. And and then what 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 about the appointment? Well, you appointed yourself. So when did you appoint yourself? That was had to be the day I got in number then the day I got my estate number. Well, or would it be the day day you're filling out the form establishing the relationship? You could have gotten the EIN number two years ago and did nothing with it, then you decided now to appoint yourself. Okay. All right. Okay. But then didn't we do that's all I need. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Wait, what document is that again? I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is this is whole my, my whole trick here, getting them on your getting all the files on your computer, then uh, going into a DOS prompt. I'm going to default to the directory, uh, the main directory. In my case, it's user divine. I know I I made my own. Um, <laughs> and then I, I didn't do, know what it was called. I'll be able to find it real D quick. D I R slash S asterisk relation asterisk and uh, it's in the the current directory. You are American curator. Oh, okay. And it's American Curator Relationship Template. And he did it on January 6th. So if you know any any word, and you did, this is a good trick, if you know any word in the title or possible word in the title, the, using this approach, using the, the DOS directory search command, because it searches through all the directories. And it's it's not the PEO counter. That's not that relationship. Uh, that's the one he just established today. It, it is. It's the same one. That's the one. It, it's the PEO. Okay. The banker. Well, you ought to compare. You ought to compare the two and see if they're basically the same form too. It wouldn't hurt to compare that and see if it's it's just a, another revision of the fifty six. 
Oh, so are okay. we going to modify that and put a banker on those, or, or are we going to leave just just the way they are? Huh? Are we gonna leave? Are we gonna leave those the way they are, or are we gonna put banker on? What's the they? I have a pronoun problem. You have a what problem? Pronoun you problem. I always need to always need to know what the pronouns refer to. Okay, I'm talking about notice concerning American PEO counter banker relationship. Okay. That's the form. I think that's just, I think that one's just an update to the notice concerning American civil curator relationship. Yes, we yes, we should just compare the forms though to just to make sure. That was done on the fifteenth. Yeah, well I okay. Yeah, my, yeah the dates that's on my computer is when I downloaded them. And what is the private tracking number on the bill of exchange? What what number do we put there? We create one. That's like your check number. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Hello, how you doing? Anyone out there? I think so. Hi. <laughs> this is this is Kevin. How you doing? Uh, yeah. I have one question for yeah. for the for the group out there. Your federal depository number would be your zip code with the four digits. Yeah, nine-digit zip code. Yeah, and then your uh, uh, your PEO uh, counter bank exception number, which would be EIN number, would be your estate EIN number. That goes on uh, the BF. That goes on I'm the BF. Why, on, why, on what document are you talking about? I'm talking about the bill of exchange document. The counter bank depository bill of exchange. The new one he put up I, from the 16th. I, I believe so. I'd have to take a look at it, though. Okay. Well, I also want to know what the ADR that says it has on it, John Per uh, uh, PEO Counter Bank American Counter Depository Receipt. The okay. ADR yeah, number. The only ADR you have, American Depository Receipt, is your certificate of live birth. Oh, okay. That that the nine the eleven digit oh, number. Okay. I'm sure yes. Yeah. So I, I think that e, the EIN number would be your estate number because everything is connected to that particular estate. Right. I, it's, I, it's, it's basically the estate while you're letting them have their filthy little hands on it, but it right. becomes your foreign grant or trust when you get it out of their hands. Right. Yeah. So that. Okay. Yeah. Because I got both. Uh, uh, I got the 98 number and, and the EIN uh, estate number. Yeah, but you haven't moved the stuff over yet because we haven't gotten a hold of it. Oh, so what? So what is the what is the reason for us sending this to the treasury? Rio Rose, Rio, Rosa Rios, uh, the voucher and the bill of exchange. Well, how to get a hold of the money? So, well, oh. remember we have two situations, uh, and he's right. saying that you you could stay in this intermediate situation by right. just sending all your utility bills in and sort of staying halfway in the system, or. Right. You could liquidate the whole account and move it to the foreign grantor trust. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so would it be a denomination you put on the bill of exchange, or would it just say, say full value? Yeah, he has some examples on how to do that. He states full value. Where, where are his examples? Are they on this paper? Yeah, I haven't seen them either. Well, they have several examples, uh, and I don't know exactly which documents, but they're they're either on a 1099 or a, a private version of them uh, uh, or a bill of exchange. You just have to go find them. Oh, does he have them on the site, do you think? Or no? They were yeah, back in his it, older processes when he was pushing the 1099 process initially. Right. Yeah. Like, you'll You'll find it in there when he wrote up the the vouchers and everything when he was first doing the the templates for that. Okay, but are we going to use the modified ones or or are we going to use the, the the IRS ones? We already did that. We stay away from the official forms. Okay, so except so, so maybe the OI except maybe the OID when we're halfway in the system. Oh, okay. And then That's we good. call them international. Now, we'll have to work through all of this. 
Yeah, I mean, that's why they're called. Things a lot, and I think we have to review every document that's out there to see whether it applies. I think we have a lot of work ahead of us. I here. think we. Got, I think. And we got to we got to organize it. I think we need to send them some lunch money, <laughs> so we come well, back on the call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we should send them lunch money every month, a little bit each month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause I okay, think, yeah, but and I think it, is, is what this was, is he just uh, is trying to stay off the phone? Yeah, because he said he... And if he, he, but he has Skype access? Yeah. So we should just put him in the call group. Right. And and that we call him right. instead of he calling us. We can, we can pick his brain. Okay, well, I'll call him tomorrow and talk to him about but that. I have a question. And maybe... Because he's on Skype, I know he sends me the documents, and he can post them to the group if he's. I mean, and we, I suppose we need to not just sit back and let him do all the work. We need to come up with some stuff too. And yeah, and, that's that's obvious. He's 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 in burnout again. Yeah. Well, maybe we could um, divide up areas of focus. So that way we can come together with the information. Well, he, a lot of... he, brought, he brought up last week uh, that he would like to see the call transcribed. And yes, uh, so... this, boy, this sure qualifies for a call that should be transcribed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I I actually prefer the shorter calls like he just did. You oh, know, definitely. I, I yeah. think the more information is uh, more compact, and uh, you know we're not sitting there with so many dead airs. But when we say yes, because he's given us so information that we're still processing it and haven't even gotten to the question part yet. And and less nonsense, um, nonsensity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Debating over. So we, we should we should come up with the equivalent of the flow chart that he came through go with about just four months ago, and and design for ourselves exactly what has to be sent in now, and what I'm thinking of doing is or organizing the econcurrent.com slash divine website, is first set up a welcome page for the new people who come in. And, uh, you know, when they come in, they say, oh, I'm new here. What do I do? And, you know, and they expect us to explain everything to them from the beginning without them having to go look at anything. Well, so we, yes, that should we also have, be um, something, a uh, filter you put in the Skype group as well. Okay. Well, yes. But what, if somebody, you know, any, anybody, I, I can I can have a start with, I've been bogged down this past week uh, with with the move, and it's mm-hmm. still going to take me a few days to get unwound. But if anybody could come up with a one-page document that the new people on the group should know about, uh, how to, how to get get into what they're expected to do, how to get uh, how how to get into the Skype group if they want to, how to get into the call group if they want to. Yes, yeah, so I started working on that, Tom, when you asked me on Skype. I just I just have I've been pretty busy so I haven't had much okay. time to dedicate to that but I did start it. Okay. Well, just just you know do it in notes in the doc doc form, and then when you get it up, I'll convert it to HTML and get it up there. I'll even throw it up first so if anyone else sees something that they would should be added, you know, we can go ahead and add that before we make it official. No, we don't have to. You know, we we'll just throw it up there instead of because circulating. Uh, I see that on the Skype group. Uh, we're uploading pet documents back and forth so much that it's now getting confusing, especially since Skype really only works when the person who's sending it and the person who's receiving it are on the group at the same time. If one of yeah. them's not there, then it then it gets lost and it has to keep getting resent. So what I, what I want to do is, is I'm going to set up a little facility that instead of sending it to the Skype group, we up, upload it to the e-concurrent. Well, how about right. how about I grab? Um, I don't know if Gita's busy, but how about if I grab her and work on the process for this latest process? I because I did I did 
file the documents last week for um, the Banker's Bill of Exchange with um, Rosarias and the okay. – I didn't do the OID, yeah, but you're you're working on a mortgage problem, right? Yeah, but I didn't. I'd like to go over that with you because I I'd like to update mine too. Okay. So um, if we may, maybe one or three work on it together. Okay. And this is the other thing is that when we have small projects like this, uh, well, I should go out and get the screen sharing part of the uh, the other facility on co free conference call so we can do some screen sharing. Yeah. So that would make it easier, especially all these questions. How do I fill out this? How do I fill out that? We should bring the oh, form yeah. up. Oh, yeah, that would so be excellent. So we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. So we maybe should do a lot of improvisatory phone calls. But I think the first thing I'll call Patrick tomorrow and saying, let us call you. As long as I call your computer and let you talk on the group through your computer, not the phone. Mm-hmm. Hey Tom. Yeah. Um have you heard of uh Adobe Connect? No. Well it's actually a program similar to Skype, but it's through um Adobe where you can interface documents amongst the conference call where all you can see it at the same time while you discuss yeah, but, and yeah, every everything with Adobe is pricey as hell though. Yeah. I haven't looked into the, the cost of work that might free, be. Free, Freeconferencing.com uh, is, a, is a free screen sharing service. The only problem is that they may have you download software to do it, and it looks like it's a little tricky getting that software running. So I'd, I'd like to try it out with just a couple of people first, knowing that we can get it going so that I don't have to debug a hundred things at once. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. How do you how do you put your uh, 98 series trust number in in the, in in place to in, in in place in a sense so that you can use it to your advantage in terms of uh, having a place to to put your assets once you uh, uh, switch over for lack of a better word. <coughs> you have to set set up account. I mean I mean how do you get that that specific number? On the account in the first place. Well, you use the ninety. Once you get the ninety-eight number, you open up an account and you use that number instead of a social security number. But we probably need to go through as to what other routine that we we tell the banker while we're doing that. And yeah, I'm not, actually I'd coordinating. Like Jackie, I'd like Jackie to give us a maybe a ten-minute discussion. Um, Time, you know, when when we talk with her, is explain what a foreign grantor trust is. How how is it different from from other trusts? So what are we really getting out of doing it? And some banks won't take it. They require other documents, because I know I talked to um, my bank about it, and they required court papers. So you know, well, we're we're a court. Yeah, now I know that. Yeah, <laughs> but. You'll have to make your own documents to bring in. That's right, and, and that that'll shock the hell out of them. And you no, know, <laughs> I, li I like the burning match uh, analogy. <laughs> <laughs> and I I think we'll have a uh, a little bit of leverage here uh, because uh, you know we're going to be moving a sizable amount in. Mm -hmm. We've also that gives us a strong negotiating position. Well, I think Jackie was saying Bank of America takes those yeah. two documents that um, World Passport and that International Permit as documents. Yeah. yeah, but Bank of America is probably one of the worst banks there are. I they have my mortgage. I absolutely hate them. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't open an account for my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said Jackie mentioned that um, 
Bank of America was the the most popular one that was being used for the 98 just because I guess they had some kind of issues and they now um, cater to international customers more so than, um, I guess you could say, U.S. citizens. So, like, she said that when you do it, though, you do have to use the um, international driver's permit and the world passport as your means of verifying identification and then you would also need to fill out a W-8 for the trust and a W-8 BEN, B-E-N, for the trustee. Hmm. And you would open it as yeah. a non-resident alien. Mm-hmm. Now, these are all her words as far as the successes that she and others have had yeah. in doing this. Do I necessarily agree yeah, with I it? Think a lot, a lot of what, I think a lot of what we're doing uh, needs to be written up. Uh, we've, you know, we've had some very interesting discussions, but what really make it going to work is for it to be. Uh, we then take our discussions and write them up in a document. Yeah. Because it's a lot easier to get things when you can go back over it. I mean, these definitions and these agreements of his, you have to read them sometimes t- ten or twelve times as they soak in. Yeah. Well, it's interesting as he did say that you do need to have a trust agreement in place. Yeah, that's what the bank looks for, are those trust agreements. And I think Amor said something when we were talking to him that one time about his trust agreement. Yeah, there was also um gentleman, um, John, he posted up um, a couple of documents, too. One of them was a trust agreement, too. Really? Do you have that? Yeah, I have that. Maybe you could shoot it over some time. Absolutely. I mean, you can see I've shoot over a lot, I shot over a lot of stuff with Skype. Yeah, yeah. We remember, very remember Patrick's opinion about trust. Yes, and that's also another issue I was... Um, there are no trust. Having with yeah. the information. Because um, oh, according to John, what it, what, it, what it appears John and Jackie, the angle they're coming from, is that... They're setting up, they've set up a trust using the 98 EIN, so it's functioning as a trust. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'd I'd suggest, and John's a good person, I've known him for a while, Uh, but I I think we ought to see see what Jackie and John are saying and then run it by Patrick and see if he would tweak it. Yeah, because they're using like an S corp and different things. Too. Right. Um, yeah, what John was doing is he pretty much developed trust underneath or corporations underneath the trust where then he was appointed trustee for them, but he would um, resign from that position and draw back into a general manager removing liability. And operate yeah, and I'm, not sure, I'm not so sure Pat Patrick would go for those mechanisms. Yeah. But at least uh, uh, we would be coming from this point of view is that we 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 try to put together something. You know, we did did some creating on our own and then let him uh, help us adjust it. Oh well, well, yeah, um, John has a diagram to... out that is like you could look at it. it's um taking Patrick's process it can be modified to fit with Patrick's process so that okay. it removes the trust part that he was working with where he got locked up in. That's where he found his issues was when he tried operating in trust. John? Yeah, John. Okay. But he had, he put it out there because he wants to see um, how we would work with the material in light of what we're working with with Patrick. Yeah, I, I think I think John wants to see how how Patrick would modify his stuff. I've yeah. I've been I've been talking with John about Patrick's process uh, for about two years now. Okay. And, he, and he's really gotten interested in, in it in the in the last uh, uh, few months, and that's when he he joined the group. Okay. Well, I think we we got a lot of work ahead of us, and we ought to organize the task. 
Yeah. So let me let me think about that, and you know we each might want to make our own proposals and let's decide on a plan. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, Thank Thomas. You. Yeah. I have a question for you. Um, this relates to Skype calls and whatnot. I don't have access to Skype yet. I want to continue with these calls. Um, is there some way that I can call into Skype off of a regular cell phone? Um, why don't you have access to Skype? I don't well, have because internet. you're on a cell phone. Because you're on a cell phone. Yes, it's not a smartphone. So I I think no, you you wouldn't be able to use the Skype system unless you had a Skype app for it. I see. You might. Okay. Oh, and you'd have to have a smartphone, right? To... Yeah, I think so. Right. This phone is not smart. Now, this, cause our <laughs> Skype, our Skype chat group is makes basically a text group. Okay. And we've we've tried a couple of times to make calls, and it's just a big mess. Right. We could try again tomorrow if we want to. If, but the, if you know, you the, can, the, the echo part of it is that we just can't understand each other. Right. Yeah, if you if get more than two people. If there's, and... some, if there's some way that you can figure out to get Patrick on Skype and then do the conference. Well, he is on Skype, and I think that's actually what he meant, and I didn't understand it. And I'm well, going to call him tomorrow and see if what he wants us to do is just simply call him on um, his Skype computer. I, I know... His, his computers aren't aren't the uh, aren't the most wonderful with Skype, and so we need to know if we, I if he and I could talk Skype to Skype, not using the telephone. And if we if we could do that, then we can put him into the call just using it through Skype. I see, because my mom is in the same situation that I am in. Um, well, not completely. She has internet but her internet is over satellite and Skype does not work well over the satellite connection like that. Okay. So she calls in on the phone and, and listens and, and asks questions and whatnot like I do. So if it goes to Skype, we're not going to be able to access it except in the recordings. Okay. I, I occasionally have internet access, so I get the recordings, but you know it's not regular enough so that I can Skype. Okay. So, all right. I just thought I'd turn that up. Okay. Let's work on all these problems. Yes. Okay. Hey, hey, hey Tom. I mean, hey, John. Hey, John. What? How do you go uh, about getting your, your international permit? Hello? Is there, you're addressing John. Is there John on here? Oh, uh, no. Is this, who is this, Tom? Yes. How do you go about getting your international permit? That, that's what Jackie's going to talk to us about when she when we have our call. You, there's an application. Um, the, um, what, a Word document? Uh-huh. It's, it's like $150. I thought it was 200 <laughs> Or maybe 200 Okay, well, how do you go about getting the application? You you need to get like um, a picture, Google a couple pictures. Okay. Well, how what happens if you Google international driver's license? Um, you know, it's not it's not under that. It's um. World passport. Inter oh, wait a minute. Call the international driver's permit. Yeah, yeah but it's under P A T A or something like that. Because AAA puts one out, but it's um, PATA. PATA. Well, I'm just going to go PATA space IDP and see what comes up. Okay. Um, Here we are, PDF International Driving Permit Information Package Freedom School. Did you get it? Well, yeah. that Freedom School offers one. Oh, okay. Okay. And you, it goes to Hawaii. It takes about four weeks. 
I mean, it's it's a PDF. Just take download the PDF and see what it says. Yeah, and there's an application right there. You fill it out, mail it yeah, in. Yeah, that's with it. It's the Pan the Pan American Auto Travel that's Association. It. That's it. Pan American, and mail it in with a uh, funds, and you get it back. <laughs> you don't have it's to do much. For, I, I, I think, I think it's the two hundred dollar pack, package that Pat, uh, that Jackie's talking about also includes a world passport. Um, yeah, the world the world passport is also like I think it's fifty bucks for that. Mhm. And that's oh. good. Yeah, you have to pay separate for that. Okay. And um. They got other stuff too on there to check out. Other documents that you can right, acquire. Right. Yeah, you can. But I, as we're as we're nailing these things down, we need to write them up so I can put them on on a page in concurrent, as as sort of an FAQ oh. page. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to go and get my pictures for those tomorrow, and I think I'm going to mail them in. So. Okay. While I do them, I'll write them up. Okay. I got work to do. And, you know that that's what <laughs> what I've been suggesting. All along is that we, whatever successes or conclusions we're coming to, we should summarize them and post right. post up to the Yahoo group so that they can see some activity. Well, Patrick hi, was. Is it Edith? Hi. Yeah, hi. Hey. Hi. Um, yeah, I couldn't talk before, but somebody was asking for the international passport or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. There is an application form for World Passport, World Birth Card, World Birth Certificate, and World Identity Card. It's um, www. I posted it on the, the Skype group. Um, <clears throat> somebody had given it to us earlier. It's oh, is this here? Www. Yeah, oh, yeah. Worldservice.org. Worldservice.org. Yeah. Okay. This one's on different than the Pan American one. I think so. Yeah. Just click on it and check it out. I haven't done it, so you know, I was just looking at it. It's interesting. I think it's from Jackie. Yeah, Jackie's. That's the one that Jackie recommended. Yeah, the, it's interesting. It's actually pretty good. It's funny because I also have like a World Birth Certificate on here too. Uh, hello, uh, you said WorldService.org. Or O R G. O R G. Okay, WorldService.org. Okay. And that should bring up everything, right? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Wait, yeah. uh, is this Jennifer? No, yeah, my name is Steve. I'm hey. from California. Oh, okay. Jennifer wants. Okay, you sounded like her. Right, oh, cool. I just yeah. pulled up something that wasn't. I thought it was what you just posted, and it's not. It's it's something about foreclosure. Oh my gosh! No, this is world <laughs> www.worldservice.org/appform.html. Okay. But I mean, once you put up the first thing, the the other stuff is in there. Okay. Wonder if it's cheaper. Oh, that's where the passport is. Yeah. And it's birth certificate. All right, yeah, that's where you get it. And the yeah, we all, pass- we all have our own link section that has a more complete description so that when, when people ask this kind of stuff we say go go look at the fact page. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also a telephone number and a fax number. Right. Okay. On there so you can call. Yeah. yeah, the the uh, Skype group is as bad as Facebook because the stuff goes by and you can't find it again. Right. And what is the fact now? What did you say? Fact number. The fax number? Yes. The fax is 202-638-0666. I did also just want to make the statement that um, these instruments are to be used temporarily until we go through the Secretary of State to get that international identification that Patrick was talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there, there, there are tools that could be used now and have been applicable, but just Bear in mind that, you know, a lot of this stuff that we're trying to set up, we are going to get once we initiate our processes. And All right, so we may be only using this for a short time. 
Yeah. I need license plates, guys. <laughs> well, Patrick has several designs. It does he? Does what does he yeah. use? Well, remember the the last one is that he is an official visitor, and the license number is your ninety eight EIN number. Really? And who does he get to make them? I don't know. Oh no, there's places. There's places. I think Steve said he um, knows of a place that makes license plates. Does or he, you can even Google it. Does he get stopped? He must. Not if you have your on ninety eight EIN on it. Well, then you you uh, when you get stopped, you have your trump card with you. Oh yeah, yeah. And you say I've revoked all this stuff. You wanna you wanna go dance around the rose bush with me on this? Because <laughs> I oh my and I still have my and license. You, and you end up paying. Oh God, my, dance around the my, rose bush. I like that one, Tom. <laughs> my son just told me if I don't turn in my plates, it's eight dollars a day. When it, when you when you stop oh, paying, remember, remember that with with your doing the trump card, there's no money <laughs> in it for them, and they they expose themselves to liability because <laughs> oh. they have no immunity. Here's a a granny fugitive. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about okay. the brand new fugitives. All right, thanks, Tom. Okay. 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 All right, we'll talk tomorrow. Very good. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll call. Pa- I'll call Patrick and uh, to see if we can work it out. So if he wants to, though, so, you know, he may want us to just work work out things ourselves, which is what we're doing right now. Okay, I but I I've got some sewing money. I'll, I'll send him some. Um, okay. Thread. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. See Bye. You Bye. Okay, good night. Hey, hey, Steve, you still on there? Yes. Hey, what's your? What, I'm I'm in California. Are you in California? Yes, I am. Hey, can I give you a call? Let me give you my number. You can call me, and we can discuss some things. Sure. I'm I'm in sure. I'm in Pittsburgh, California. Oh, are you? Are you in Southern Northern California? I'm in I'm in Northern California, uh, up to by San Francisco. Oh, okay, okay, all right, sure. Okay, my number is five ten area code. What what's your area code now? Let me the recording. My area code is is five ten. Okay. 